trying to finish up this green vestment that I've used for a lot of classes. This is a velvet vestment. It has a high pile. Um, and I didn't have enough of the act of this color green fabric uh, for the maniple. I had to go with another green that's a slightly different than this one. Because I didn't have enough green, I decided to cut down on the burst. Now, another reason to cut down on the burst was because it is velvet. I don't need velvet in the, as a lining. So uh, what I did was I cut all the burst pieces from lining. These are the burst sides. Um, this is this would be the burst if I weren't using velvet. And again, I have a burst front and a burst back from the lining. What I'm going, what I plan to do, is put the velvet because I only need the velvet on the front and the back. I don't need the velvet on the inside. And this is the inside of the burst. Half of this is the inside of the burst, half of it is the outside. So I've done this with other bursts that I had that were velvet. Uh, so the way it's going to work is this is going to come he here and this is how big the burst is. It's cut exactly to the side of the burst. Because it is cut exactly to the size of the verse, I'm going to cut it down because I will have to cover the edge with trim. And the trim has to be partly on the, on the velvet and partly on the other fabric so that it has, um, it can really hold it in place. Now I have only enough trim probably to do the verse and possibly the chalice veil. So, um, so I'm going to, since this trim is about a half an inch wide, I will be cutting the velvet down about a quarter of an inch so that it's a quarter of an inch smaller than the actual burst board. Right now it's exactly the same size as the burst board. So I will be cutting um, a half an inch off two sides to make it a uh, quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. And I will do that to both pieces. Alright, so, but uh, before I do that, what I want to do is put the applique down on this. Because once I put this velvet on the lining, uh, I'll be working with it just as the lining being one piece. So I need to uh, put the applique down. The applique for this is, um, this is a raised gold applique. It came from India. They, they use metallic gold thread. Uh, it doesn't look like it's done on, looks like, again, like it's like done on cardboard. It's covered on the back with a cloth, uh, a cotton weave cloth looks like. Uh, so I'm going to put this down. I'm going to put it as like that. So I need to find, and I'm, and because I will have to sew this down, but because, again, because this is velvet and this is also very thick, um, I'm going to glue this in place. Just as I glued my trim down, I'm going to be gluing this in place. So I need to first find out where it's going to have to go. So um, I'm going to cut the edges off, then I'm going to put this down. I'll also put, be putting one of these on the chalice veil, the ends of both of the stole and the maniple. So I have six of those. And I'll be doing that first. It can't be put down with stitch witchery or steam a seam. It's just too thick. I don't even think steam would go through this. So I'll be doing it with glue. So that's the plan. All right, so 
Let's put this aside. We're going to work with this. And I want to cut this down a half an inch on two sides. Let me double check this. That's half an inch. So I want a quarter of an inch off this side and a quarter of an inch off this side so I can take half an inch off one side. And I'm going to do that by lining up the edge. Velvet does move a lot. And chalking a line. And also a half an inch off the bottom. Before I cut it, you know, it's always met with the rule measure twice, cut once. So this should have been nine inches square. I've taken a half inch off, so it should be now be eight and a half by eight and a half. Eight and a half by eight and a half. Okay, so my scissors. Oh my bigger scissors. It's easier to take half inch off one side than to try and take a quarter off an of inch each off all four sides. If I had my applique down in the middle, I would have to do it that way, but I haven't done that yet, so now with luck. <coughs> should have a quarter of an inch, pretty much a quarter of an inch all the way around. It doesn't look, this one side looks, doesn't look straight. That aside, do the same thing with this one. This edge is pretty straight, that edge is pretty straight, so I think I'll take it off of this these two edges over here.
Okay, it's about a quarter of an inch all the way around. All right, so now this should be eight and a half across. find the middle of the side eight and a half would be four and a quarter should be the middle and Two, three, four, and a quarter. So right about there should be the center. And the center of this is right here. Yeah, these this is so hard you can't hop, you can't even get a pin through it. Uh -huh, I'm gonna get a needle through it. But That should be the center. So let's check this. This is two inches from this edge. It's two inches from this edge. It looks like more than two there. Now definitely two and a half. And two and a quarter here. So I need to go up a little bit. Okay, so this side is now two, and this side is two, and let's just put the thing down. All right, so this side is center should be at four and a quarter, which would be there. This is two and a quarter. This is two and a quarter, pretty much. How about this way? So we've got two and an eighth this way, and more than that that way so let's find the center of this so this should be at two and a quarter so this needs to come over a tiny bit it should be the middle two and a quarter two and a quarter okay so this is this is where i need it to be And I'm going to put a chalk mark because it's going to get moved when I pull it up to put the glue glue down. So that's one corner. That's another corner. And that's a third corner. Remember the pile shifts things. I can feel as I'm pushing on it that it's moving a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take some glue. I'm not putting it on the velvet. I'm going to put it on the back of this. And I'm not going to put a lot. Just enough to tack it down a little bit. This glue dries very quickly. to line it up again with those marks. And hold it down for a couple seconds until it sets. Okay. 
And as I'm pushing on it and the nap is moving it, I got want to make sure that it stays in those marks. Now, once this is set, I'll take it over the sewing machine and sew around it. I probably will do the same thing to the other pieces too. I'll just put this aside and I'll finish drying. It should be it should be pretty much dry right now, but all right. So this is my burst pieces. And I also have the chalice veil. Now, which chalice veils don't always come out square, and they don't have to be. Um, and they don't have to be um, any particular size either. They just need to cover the chalice. And you, of course you need some room in the back. They won't, don't go all the way down in the back because he has to have his hand there. So this one is it's longer this way than this way. I can tell that by just looking at it. This is about 18, I want to say 20. Looks like 20 and a half that way. This one this way. 18, 19 and a half. So it's an inch longer that way. So which direction would I put it? I would put it the long way as so that it goes up over the chalice and down the back. And um, appliques are usually put in the lower third. So if this, if you were to divide this 20 in half, uh, it would be about 3 inches. I probably would want to put the applique about 3 inches up from the bottom. Again, you want to visually look, put it like about a third, the middle of the, the bottom third. So I think visually that's the spot for it, but let me just check this. This is 18. Ruler is 18, isn't it? Yeah, 18. So 20. Um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve and a little over. So this is about this is about two thirds and this is about one third. So if I put this in the middle of the lower third, I would put it right about there. And I'm gonna put a little bit high on the lower third. Because I am gonna have trim around the bottom. And I don't want this too close to that trim. So, now, where is it centered? So, this is, do this this way, this is 18, 19 and a half. So, I want to do nine and three quarters. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and three quarters, just about right. Okay, so again, I'm going to put chalk marks. I use Beacon Fabri-Tac, um, explained on the materials video why. It's because it's clear, it dries very quickly, um, it won't run. Some of, the, some of those white fabric glues run all over the place. Generally, they takes forever for them to dry, so you have to hold them for a while. And, but this this doesn't. I used, to, I used to make dolls. And I still do occasionally, not often. Most of my time now is spent fixing fixing in a, in front of Prague statues. People bring them to me. They find them at Goodwill and Salvation Army and places like that. And they're usually broken. Almost always their hands are broken. And that was the case with the original infant of Prague when he was thrown behind the altar when the soldiers in the revolution took over and threw him behind the altar. His hands got broken. And he told brother, I guess his name was Cyril, you know, brother, brother Cyril made, put him up for people's admiration. And he said, the more you bless me, the more I will bless you. And and then, so, they proceeded to get his hands fixed. Now I'm just going to drag this over here, out of the way, while that dries. It's not quite... Let me put this, put this under it. Now, the stole, I have to go over and sew. I might as well sew a lot of things at the same time. So I'll take out all these pins. The stole gets one at each end, as does the maniple. See how it shifts. See, this is really should be there, but just from moving it around, it likes it, it likes to move. Okay. Okay, so I need to put a seam across the end of this. Seam across the end of this. Let's make sure it's lined up because I can say it's see it, it, it like I say it likes to move. And it'll move just sitting there. <laughs> Every time you move it around, it will move. I use a walking foot to sew with velvet because it moves less if you use a walking foot. And I'll show you what a walking foot looks like if you don't have one. If you don't sew much with velvet, there's no point in getting one. You, you'll still work out. Uh, first of all, I suggest buying a low nap velvet. 
and just working with those. Um, this is a silk velvet and it's a high nap. Don't know where I got it, but I can never get any more of it. It was it was a remnant of some I think I got on eBay or someplace like that. But all right, now that I have it all lined up. Um, you can see that one end is longer than the other. It was cut wrong. I don't care about that right now, but it will affect where I put the applique. So I need to cut this off. And I can see it's also crooked. a beautiful green. It's like a sap green, hunter green. I think more sap green than hunter green. The light catches it. Makes It's beautiful the way the light catches it. Um, and that's one of the nicest things about velvet is things like that. Um, Alright, so where would I put these at the bottom? Actually, I think I'm going to hold off on this, and I have a reason for doing that. Um, oh, you might say, well, yeah, you should have a reason for doing everything. Yeah, but what I'm going to do actually is from about here down, where these, these things are going to be, because they are heavy. Not that heavy, not as heavy as, not as, heavy as this, but they are heavy. And so I am going to put in the very bottom of these, not the whole thing, because then it won't drape as nicely as I would like. Uh, but in the bottom eight inches, maybe even 12 inches, I'm going to put some interlining. And I think I'm, I want to cut the interlining um, before I put this down. Because it, when I put this down, I'd like the interlining to help hold this in, in, in place. So I'm gonna sew across this, and then I'll come back and do that part. Um, this is the maniple. Now the maniple had to do from another velvet. I'm not happy with this, but I, I've I have I've had this vestment unfinished for years. One of my students can tell you that because every time she used to come for class, you're not finished the that, that vestment yet. She saw the she saw the uh, video when, on on YouTube and she says <laughs> she, that was her comment again. You, when are you going to finish the vestment? <laughs> All right, and I'm going to finish it this week. Because the priest is coming Saturday to get it. All right, so you can see it is different. It's darker. Um, this has more of a yellow to it, though together they don't look that much different. But it, when the light hits it, you can see a big difference. But this is the maniple. It's going to be on his arm most of the time, not even seen. So don't care well I care but I can't care too badly so all right it is a little bit stiff for the fabric it's not as flimsy as this it has a stiffness to it um, and that's because this is silk and this is not silk so I'm gonna to have to sew this across the top the lining was cut on the fold so it doesn't have to be sewn so I can just put that aside 
and I'm going to wait on this too. I'll do this when I do this sole because I haven't decided whether I want to put interlining in the bottom of this. I probably won't because it doesn't really need it. It's, it's not as flimsy as this. But I may just do it to reinforce it and uh, even if it's only this much because that applique will probably go right about there. So in that about in about that space. So I'll sew these and then come back. Okay, so I want to show you what I've decided to do. I am going to put stabilizer interfacing in the bottom of this. So what I did was I cut a piece of it and I'm not gluing it down, I'm not stitch witching it down, I'm not sewing it down, I'm just pinning it in place at the bottom. When I put the applique on this side, which I'll do shortly, it will hold it in place. And when I put the lining on, I don't want the applique, I don't want the interfacing in the lining because this is going to be right sides together, turn inside out. And that fabric in the lining is going to make it hard to turn. It's going to make it too stiff. So it's out of the way of, of any um, stitching that will be uh, part of attaching the lining. I did the same to the stole. Stole needs it more than, than the maniple does because as I say that fabric is a little bit stiffer. But this is very flimsy and I did the same thing. I'm just pinning it in place and now I'll put I'll glue the applique down in the space where I think it should go. And I'll half fringe the bottom. I usually like to go up about two or three inches from the fringe. So there'll be at least a quarter, half of an inch turned at the bottom. That's two inches right there. I want two and a half. Maybe. Yeah, I think two and a half looks better. So, two and a half. See that it's centered. Yep. And I'll mark it and glue it. Um, these I found, I sew, I've sewn one down already. Actually, I sewed both of them down, but I had to rip up half of the, the burst one because, again, that shifting, it shifted too much. And so I found that it really needs to be glued at the very edges so that it, that doesn't shift. Um, where is the stole piece? You can see on the back of the chalice veil, this puckering, that's from the shifting. Where the glue is, it could move. So by putting the glue, now I looked at this and it doesn't, it's still, it's still centered, it's still fine. Uh, however, the, the burst really shifted a lot. So uh, I had to re-glue the burst, the uh, re-glue re the burst piece. It's not dry yet, uh, but I did put glue right at the very edge. So that's what I need to do with this one: is put glue right at the very edge. Um, before I do that, I need to make sure these are all both. So this was one and a quarter in from the edge. Should be about here. Let's see what that looks like. It's about one and a half. One and a half. Okay, from the bottom, 
I am seven inches, seven inches. Okay. Do a lot of measuring. right there. Okay, so put some glue on this one. Again, a little in the middle, but most. You don't want to make it so thick that you can't get your needle through it, but it does need to be glued at the edge. This one, line up the corners and push down. As I say, it does. This one's probably already glued. Yes, because it does dry very quickly. Um, this one isn't. Uh, push it up out of the way while I do the manifold pieces. So where do I want these? I think about two inches up. I did two and a half on that, and that looks good. And this is two and a half to here. No. It's two inches from that edge. Just to come over a little bit. Okay. Thank you. 
glue these pins because once I glue that, I'll be gluing the pin in place. Just move it up a little bit out of the triangle. Same with this one here. These two pins are right in the triangle. Diamond. Right in the diamond, still in the diamond. It's better. Okay. A little glue in the middle. And a little glue all around the edges. When I sew it down, I have to sew it around the edges too. I tried sewing just across it because it's so stiff, I thought, but it does lift at the edges if you don't sew it down. And by the way, these these kind of appliques, I think I got these off of eBay. Came, they came from India, but so they are around. If you really want one, I don't recommend them, but if you really want one, I mean, they look very good, but you can see they're a pain to work with. I've had these for years just because I didn't have anything that I really wanted to use them for. I used to do my own appliques, but this vestment has so much gold on it, and the applique is gold, and I didn't want to do another metallic applique, so, and I thought, oh well, I have these, and they would go very well with it, so I will do that. I'm gonna let these, let these dry while I finish um, sewing those, and then come back and get this one, and then we'll continue.